Alright everyone, recently somebody sent me a message asking why Macs don't get viruses. And a really good video to watch just to get a general overview and compare and contrast the history of OS X versus Windows is to watch this video from Mr. Bit10 entitled Market Share and Viruses. So in this video he goes a little bit into Unix being a multi-user um, operating system and how it was designed to go on the network. And he also goes on to explain that Windows was designed just for single user personal computer use and really uh, security was an afterthought built into Windows. And I agree with pretty much this entire video and the points that he makes. So today I'm just going to go a little bit more in depth into the multi-user aspect of the Unix in OS X and look at file permissions and why it is programs or malicious programs have such a hard time writing themselves into the file system and infecting OS X machines. Every file and directory in Mac OS X has a set of permissions associated with it. This again was inherited from the Unix operating system which was designed with multi-user environments in mind. If I issue the command ls-l, I'll get a detailed listing of every file and folder from the command line. Here I can view things such as file mode, the number of items when working with directories, a file's owner, the group that the owner belongs to, the file size on disk, the file creation or modification date, and finally the file name itself. So looking a little more closely at this, the first letter in the series of characters is going to indicate to you whether you're working with a directory, an individual file, or a symbolic link. And a symbolic link in Unix is very similar to an alias in Mac OS 9 or Mac OS 10. And after that, you'll be working with the actual permissions of a file or folder. And here you have user permissions, group permissions, and finally, special permissions. Going a little bit deeper, these permissions can actually be broken down into read access, write access, and execute access. So in the case of programs on your hard drive, read access means that you can open a file and read from it. And in the case of running a program such as Terminal or Firefox, that means that the system can read the file on your behalf and run it. If a file has write access, that simply means that you can open the file, modify it, save it, and make changes. Execute access is a special flag in Unix, and execute access belongs to applications or programs that can run through your CPU. And again, this serves as a safeguard to distinguish executable programs from normal scripts or text files that live on your hard drive. So with the execute flag in place, you have an extra layer of protection that tells the operating system when it's actually running a program through your machine's hardware. And when the execute is access, when the execute flag is set in respect to your given owner, that means that the owner of the file can actually execute that program. Now going on a little bit further with these owners. Um, the root owner means that that belongs to the system or OS X itself. And root is very specialized and highly isolated and it's even at a level in terms of access. It has a higher access level than even an administrator. So most of the time when you're dealing with system files or system directories that are owned by root or by the system you're going to have to end up typing your password to make sure that you really want to make changes to the, to the files that belong to root. And usually root files and root directories belong to the group called wheel. And that's just to indicate that once again it belongs to a very specialized group of users belonging to your computer and all of the root entries are typically associated with the wheel user group in OS X. To give you an idea as to how file permissions protect OS X from spyware and viruses, 
I'm going to do something that's potentially very dangerous. Right now I'm in my system slash library slash core services directory. And entering any commands or typos in this directory could render your Mac unusable. So only do this if you're very familiar with the terminal and if you know exactly what you're doing. For the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to relist all the files in this directory and I'm going to try and delete a folder that I may not need anymore, such as eyesight updater. So I'm going to issue the command rm-r eyesight updater. And when I press enter, it's going to prompt me and stop me from deleting the file. And the reason why is because currently I'm logged in as Jay-Z. And I can tell who, who I'm currently logged in as just by typing in the command, who am I? So because I'm not the owner of this file, it's going to stop me and it's going to ask me, do I want to override the permissions for this file? And currently the, the person or the ownership belongs to the system Mac OS X. And it, once again, you can tell because it's listed as root. So I'm going to type in yes. And it's going to run into a problem and say that permission is denied. And this is because, once again, the root user is the highest level user in Mac OS X or in any Unix system in general. And it's going to stop me because the root user is so specialized and so protected. So even if I wanted to delete this, there's no way I, it would let me. It would just say permission denied. Now, if I really wanted to be dangerous and malicious, what I would have to do is invoke the sudo command and type in sudo rm-r eyesight slash updater. And if I press enter, it's going to prompt me for my password. And once again, this should be very familiar such as when you install a program into your applications directory or make any changes like when you do a software update. It's always going to ask you for your password before making system level changes. And the reason why is because once again it goes back to the concept of file permissions. And everything that lies on top of the Unix layer, everything that happens in the GUI, and whenever you're prompted for your password, it needs that password so it can specially access the file permissions and make system level changes to your system. No operating system can ever claim to be bug or virus free. But when Apple chose Unix as the basis for Mac OS X, they went a long way in closing the door to a lot of infections, bugs, and spyware that often plague Windows systems. Even though Apple has a long way to go in terms of security and some of their internal security review policies, I believe that with Unix as the underlying foundation to OS X, many users of the computers are going to continue to have trouble-free experiences. And I do have a healthy criticism of Apple for some of their security practices, but I'll get into that into a later video. So anyways, that's just my overview of file permissions, Unix, and Mac OS X. Alright, that's about it. Peace.